Today's mission is to do some VOR flight training because I'm studying my written test for my instrument rating and I've gotten to the point where uh, they went over VORs and I uh, wanted to come in the airplane and test, not test, train a little bit because it's been a while since I've done any VOR flying navigation and secondly I've gotten some new avionics since uh, I last did some VOR uh, navigation and uh, I've played with it uh, just a little bit just to see how it all worked uh, when I first got the avionics installed but I haven't actually used it to do any sort of navigation with. So today we're going to go up and there's a VOR just south of us past Shenandoah called Montebello. We're going to try and pick that up and then there's one to the east. I don't recall the name of it, but if uh, if things work out, maybe I'll try to pick that one up as well. And um, the other thing I'm going to uh, be training, not training, looking at is uh, my uh, fuel flow monitor. I'm gonna turn this on. And while it's coming up, uh, these are the new avionics that I got. I used to have two of these Garmin uh, nav comms, but I traded one in on this Garmin um, GPS. I should probably turn this on as well. Uh, and I had this engine monitor installed, which I added the fuel flow feature to. Everything else works, but the fuel flow feature has not been accurate. It works. It's just uh, like a setting was off or something like that. So if you'll notice the top value says gallons per hour and then you've got used and remaining. Those are related to the fuel flow. And it should draw anywhere between 8 and 10 gallons per hour on a cruise. <clears throat> Maybe more like 12 on a climb out. But it was saying like 3.5, which it didn't do 3.5 on its best day. So I had the avionics guy look at it. He tried a few things and I think he finally got it. So... Uh, the last flight I took, it looked like it was doing the right thing. I just want to keep monitoring that to see if it's uh, recording accurately. And when you get done flying, you take this, uh, these values, how much it used, and can compare to how much uh, you fill back up in the tanks. And they should be really close. So let's turn that off. And let's go get up in the air. Clear prop! <laughs> Traffic Cherokee 5773 uniform, departing runway 22, will be exiting the pattern to the south with blue ray traffic. Fuel floor, full throttle. Engines are making power. Engine instruments are in the green. Airspeed's coming alive. 50. 60. 65, a little back pressure. Stay in ground effect. Pitching for 85. There's my 85. Start my climb out, close my window. Clear the obstacles, bleed the fat, flaps. Climbing 4,500. It's uh, a little late. Uh, 618, I believe. Sunset is in approximately one hour. If I can pull that up real quick. Blu ray. Uh, weather. Daily. 716. We're doing 13.2 gallons per hour 
on the climb out, which seems about right. Be what we're at when we're at cruise. We're at 2,600, climbing 4,500. A little hazy up here, but still pretty that far. No clouds, really, just a slight haze. We've got the VOR punched into the GPS. That's the, where the magenta line is heading to. It's 48 nautical miles away. I don't have my iPad today. I forgot it, but I have my phone. Uh, worst case, I have the GPS. So as far as navigation goes, I'm in good shape. Not to mention I've flown this area so many times locally that I could probably fly it on pilotage alone. And we're, uh, we're not going far. We're gonna stay around this local area here. There's 3,000, climbing 4,500. Ah, the sun is right there. This is a see-through one, not an opaque one. But it's going better than nothing, I suppose. 115.3 for Montebello. So if we change this to Nav, Nav 115.3. So there's Nav 1 and there's Nav 2. This is Nav 1, but technically it doesn't really have anything that we can use. It doesn't have a VOR uh, radio or anything on it, so it's kind of just a dead button. But Nav 2 is what we want. And let me see if I can see that uh, Morse code. Okay. And there, and there, and there. One more time. 4,000, climbing 5,500. Or 4,500. Yep, that's it. Morse code checks out. That's Montebello. Turn nav two off. There's four thousand. Climbing four thousand five hundred, five hundred feet a minute. Green, 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 green. Outside temperature 69. It's a little warm today. It was high 80s on the ground, and it's the uh, middle of September. It's been cooling off, but today it uh, warmed back up. All right, there's 4,400. We're going to start slowing it down a little bit. 2,400 on the RPMs. Trim out. There's 2,450 ish. That looks good. Let's trim. There's our 4,500. All right, let's put this on uh, source VOR. Let's dial this in. Uh, oh, of course, dial this in so it straightens up. Watching outside for other airplanes. Turn, turn, turn. Hey, our arrow's coming up. All right, now our little bar is coming over. Keep turning. Course is 219, 218. So let's put our course on 218. All right, we need to head that way. 218. Let's uh, not climb. We were up to 4,600. Let's get this back down. 2019, there we go. Let's get our uh, 
lean find going. A little bit of lean. Finder. Stay on 219s. Watch our altitude. Yeah, traffic. So, so 733, small chart number, turn right, cross one, runway 24. Shannon. Let's put this on 123 because that's Shadilla. We're going to fly right past it. Back over to the left. Shenandoah traffic, Archer 5506, Foxtrot departing runway 23 to the south. Shenandoah. Okay, we're looking good. Uh, forgot about our lead find. Nine. And it's hazy tonight. Got off course a little bit. With the point traffic, Jim, that is 053 Bravo is on the 45 for the downwind for runway. Uh, now that we're leaned, we're 10.3, uh, 10.4. 10 that looks good. We're, we're up a little bit on our RPMs. So let's bring that back down. Maybe that's why we're climbing. 400. Got off course. That maps with the GPS. We're to the left of the course. As the bar is to our right. We're off uh, one bar, I think. Two miles. Back over this way. Alright, now we're down to 9.0, 9.1. Good. Deflected way too far. Let's get back on track. QR is working great. Altitude is good. 219. And the VOR is working. I am not tracking it very well. I'm trying to do all kinds of other stuff. But, uh, they're working correctly. The uh, engine monitor is working correctly. It looks like we're doing 9.8, 9.5. It's around what I would expect it to do. Uh, we'll know for sure when we calculate how much food fuel was used at the end of the flight. And uh, our VOR navigation is working. Uh, we're not staying on course very well, but that'll come with some practice. So it's so hazy out here, I'm going to swing back around and drop down to 3,500. And I don't have a lot of time anyway, I just wanted to get up here and play with the VOR, get a little bit of time in, practice. It's always good to practice flying and practice landing, takeoffs and all that goes with it, planning. And we're going to swing back towards the Blue Ray. We're going to lower this altitude to 3,500. Now we're heading away from the VOR pointing behind us, which is good. Alright, we're beating the numbers. Let's start slowing this thing down. We're in the wide arc, pull first notch flaps. Blue Ray traffic, Cherokee 73 inform, turning right base 2 2, Blue Ray traffic. Watching our speed.
Great ups. Back at notch and flaps. Luray traffic, Cherokee 5773 in a form, turning final 2-2, two -two, Luray traffic. Watching our speed, lining up the center line. Overshot just a hair. Last notch of flaps. Good one. I could have held it a hair longer, but it didn't bounce back up.